Until the late 1970s, most SLA research had focused reasonably enough on processes and products in interlanguage development, cross-linguistic influence, errors and error types, morpheme accuracy orders, developmental sequences, and so on. A substantial body of work on the properties of mother ease or caretaker talk was developing in first language acquisition, but there was little comparable L2 research. Evelyn Hatch, my eventual dissertation supervisor at UCLA, was perhaps the first to draw attention to the role of conversation in SLA, as in this memorable statement from her 1978 book, quote, language learning evolves out of learning how to carry on conversations. One, learners ha one learns how to do conversation, one learns how to interact verbally, and out of this interaction, syntactic structures are developed. The most direct test of Evelyn's claim was eventually to be Charlie Sato's PhD dissertation. See, for example, her 1988 article in SSLA. Evelyn's claim echoed my own experiences being taught Spanish at school in England, but not learning very much at all, and then later actually acquiring Spanish through using it and hearing it used while working in Peru and Mexico. As a PhD student at UCLA, I carried out several studies of input and interaction in foreigner talk discourse, resulting in a number of publications between 1980 and 1983. Some were reports of database studies, others, like the 1983 article in SSLA, were syntheses of findings from several people's work, not just my own. The most interesting findings concerned the amount and often very skillful kinds of negotiation work native speakers were doing to establish, maintain, and repair communication in conversations with low proficiency non-native speakers. Some types of native speaker interlocutors, notably those with substantial prior foreigner talk experience, were better at this than comparably educated native speakers with little or no such experience. In addition, certain types of tasks, for example, two-way tasks and closed tasks, elicited more negotiation for meaning. Finally, if anything was surprising at all, it was that many of the modifications the natives made were not to the input per se, but to the interactional structure of conversation. The native speakers tended not to simplify the input linguistically so much, rather they simplified the task and elaborated the input. Modifications to the interactional structure of conversation were achieved through use of a variety of devices designed to avoid conversational trouble or to repair matters when communicative trouble arose. Native speakers tended to speak more slowly, to use comprehension checks, confirmation checks, clarification requests, exact and semantic repetition, synonyms and lexical switches. They favored yes, no and all choice questions, both of which are easier for low proficiency non-natives to respond to than WH questions. They made new topics salient through left dislocation, San Diego, did you like it? Decomposition, switching from subject predicate to topic comment constructions, and leaving one beat pauses before and or after key information bearing words. And they accepted and smoothed over unintentional non-native topic switches if possible. The experienced uh, foreigner talkers amongst my participants were the better ones at, the, at these things. Many of the changes have considerable potential for facilitating language learning. For example, the focus on communication and sustaining conversation means the native speakers provide a considerable amount of positive and negative feedback, implicit negative feedback, and corrective recasts in particular. A series of subsequent studies, for example, the one by Yes Catellano, Steve Ross, and me in language learning in 94, showed that by modifying the interactional structure of conversation or of written texts, mostly through building in redundancy of various kinds, it was possible to achieve roughly comparable levels of improved comprehensibility on the part of the non-natives to that achieved by a simplification. Moreover, this could be done while retaining much of the input's original richness and linguistic complexity, and also while preserving its semantic content, content often lost through input simplification, as Steve Ross and I showed in 1993, and as is being shown by a current PhD dissertation here at Maryland by Asma al -Thawaini. This means that learners are exposed to the lexis, collocations, and grammatical features they need to encounter if they are going to learn them items typically removed from the input by linguistic simplification, and to full syllabus content if they are receiving subject matter instruction through the medium of a second language. These ideas, known collectively as the interaction hypothesis, were later updated to connect external behavioral moves, such as recasts, 
during negotiation for meaning to internal cognitive processes relevant to language development. The interaction hypothesis accords a significant role in SLA to negative feedback. Corrective recasts in particular are crucial points at which explicit and implicit learning converge in optimal ways. The interaction hypothesis has motivated a number of empirical studies and several statistical meta-analyses with findings generally supportive. Two books that I think provide excellent syntheses and analysis of work in this area are Sue Gass's 1997 Input Interaction and the Second Language Learner, which has just been reissued, by the way, a second edition uh, in 2018, and Alison Mackey's Input Interaction and Corrective Feedback in L2 Learning from Oxford in 2012. I would also recommend the Methodological Critique of Research on Recast by Jay Gu and Allison in SSLA in 2013, and the excellent overview of research on the linguistic environment, interaction, and negative feedback in SLA by Eugel Ilmaz, which came out in the first issue of the new journal Brill Research Perspectives in Multilingualism and Second Language Acquisition. All this might make it look like the original work has had an influence on the field, one has to remember, however, that the opportunities for interlanguage development offered by elaborated input, non-native speaker, native speaker conversation, and negotiation for meaning, for example, the value of implicit negative feedback in the form of recasts, are not of much interest for linguistic nativists at the other end of the theory spectrum, and at one, and at one end, and at the other end, for those who maintain that SLA is largely a process of explicit learning and skill acquisition. The interaction hypothesis does have implications for language teaching materials design, I think, and for CLIL and English medium education. For example, for all but very advanced L2 learners, the choice is not, as is so often presented, e.g. in the literature on extensive reading, one between simplified and so-called authentic reading material, but rather one between simplified and elaborated spoken and written material. Now as then, linguistic simplification, not elaboration, is still the norm in grammar-based textbooks. Strict controls over grammar and vocabulary in the typical dialogues and reading passages in those books do improve their comprehensibility, but they do so by removing much of the very things learners need to acquire from the input, and in the hands of all but the most expert materials writers, serve up language samples very different from the way the L2 is really used by native speakers. Few grammar-based, text-based materials create conditions for genuine negotiation work in the classroom. On a more positive note, one area where research findings have had an impact is in the design of task-based materials and classroom methodology for TBLT.